What is going down, ladies and gentlemen? We are still working on the Jeep. Doing some videos on the other channel. Today, we're going to focus on the engine side. We knew from a long time ago, probably about four years ago, that the engine was already getting weak. So, I pulled up that video and I got the compression numbers off of it. The compression in the Jeep should be between 120 and 150. Four years ago, 130, 2 and 3, 121, 120. During that time, we also supercharged the engine. So I'm very quite curious to know what it's going to be like now. How much has changed after it's been supercharged. Now I'm going to do is pull these damn spark plugs out. Oh yeah, this one's going to be tricky, eh? With the special, special spark plug. Ah, it's not going to work on that one, unfortunately. Ah, it came off. Oh, the special tool won't work in these holes. Damn it. It's going to give them the old twister root. And then pull them off. And then we're going to blow them out. Number three is the one we effed up and redid. See if number four will come off nicely. Yeah. Not used the air compressor in a while. Still got air, it's still holding air. Uh, not too bad for water. That's a little bit in there. A little bit in there. It's not good. Let's blow the spark plug holes out. Hold any crap. Last thing we want to do is get that stuff in our engine. You know what I'm saying? You know how strong this engine is. Once again, this is where Dunnage blocks are your friend. Take out all these plugs, we'll have a look at them. This is where Butterfingers pull them all out. Oh yeah, that one looks really good actually. Way better than number three. Way better. So many people like to see wrenching. They like to see wrenching. I wonder if they like to do it. How's that spark plug look? It looks all right, actually. You know what? I better do this now. Because I'm most likely going to forget. And that's to disconnect the coil. Done. Don't disconnect the coil. Then the spark plug wires are going to be... Bouncing off everywhere. Come on, you little bastard. Why? Why do the ones in the back always cause so much trouble? Didn't get enough love as a child? We're gonna yard out the fuel pump relay so we don't like fill the engine full of fuel. That wouldn't be good. So I got all the spark plugs pulled out. I don't know if the camera's gonna be able to pick it up, but can you see? Anyways, that's probably about the best you're gonna be able to get. Now it's out of focus again. Anyways, it looks like little pieces of metal have uh, slowly welded itself on there over time. It's interesting. What I'm really trying to say is that probably chunks of the engine are probably breaking apart and fusing themselves to the spark plugs. This engine's treated me pretty well. It has uh, definitely been taken to beating.
I'm still processing the readings from four years ago to today. All I know right now, number five, number five. What's behind cylinder number five? Sure not a hot date, that's for sure. <sighs> Wonder how much it would cost me to get the head done and then just buy a set of rings and an oil pump and throw it in. I'd have to uh, pull one of the journals off the crank and have a look at the crank. See what it looks like. Cheaper the better. I know a V8 swap, including buying the engine and everything else, probably close to 10 grand, not including axles. That's not in this budget. Ideally, I want to move on to a JK, but I want to keep this one around for a little while longer. And I also don't want to sell it in the condition it's in either. Need to need whoever is going to buy it in the future to feel good about it. I want it to be up to par. Not fucking rip somebody off. Anyways, I got some things I got to do tonight. We'll come back out tomorrow and uh, we're going to do a head gasket test. Well, back in the garage. Got to finish this video off. Kick the Jeep out. Um, take another break from the Jeep as we do some rust repair on the Ford. And then we're going to get hardcore into the Jeep and start doing some major work to it. Well, one thing, I got to drive it till the fuel tank is almost empty so I can drop the fuel tank because there's a uh, pretty good rust patch at the back. Uh, you can see right there, it needs to be cut out. And it's not really a good idea to be cutting and welding um, right beside the gas tank because you never know, right? It could blow up. So we're going to be pulling the gas tank out, stripping all the fender flares off, probably going to fix all the rust, give it a repaint job, um, do some body coating on it. I wouldn't mind changing out the flares too, uh, going to for more like a steel flare as we prepare to go for the overland uh, build. So, gonna be taking a look at that, but right now we're gonna start filming the video of when I posted that misfire. Um, one of the other ones that people said could be a head gasket. Now that is a very good one because on my Jeep, as we talked about, cylinder number five seems to be an issue, 100 PSI. This one right here. Cylinder number three is reading good, is one that gave us the misfire. Now, one thing I have been suffering for a while is that uh, the coolant bottle is always low. Doesn't use a lot of coolant, but the coolant bottle is low. And do I have the smoked out exhaust yet? No, I don't. If this is how your exhaust was, this would be a for sure telltale sign that you got a head gasket blowing. Put this tester in there and antifreeze pissed out all over. It's not exactly a perfect science because it leaks to the top there. Well, that didn't work out the way I wanted it to go, so we're just gonna silicone or seal this thing up permanently. Of course, shit show level to the fucking max. Now this is all hardened up at the tube. Uh, fuck it. What we're gonna do... The fuck are some snips? Will that work? Really? F snips that don't even touch together. Cut it though. Perfect. Just gonna seal that thing right the fuck up permanently. Well, I had another fancy test I was gonna do. Involved this pump and a special tool you put in the, in the neck and you apply some pressure and you 
start the engine and rev it and if your head gasket is leaking you'll be able to see the gauge here pressure up fortunately it's got an internal leak not going to be any help to us now let's get this thing out of the garage again you know for that one cylinder that seems to be giving us issues it still runs pretty good even with that exhaust leak, I kind of screws around with my air fuel ratio. This Android stereo has been holding out pretty good too. A lot better than what the last one did in the Ford. You can hear my belt squeal because they got antifreeze on them. I need to burn up almost a tank of fuel in the next week. Shouldn't be too hard. Drive around the block twice and that'll be it. Oh, the garage is empty again for a few days. I think it's motherfucking beer time now. I got some rolling rock. All right, motherfucking beer time. Sorry about the short video, but we're moving on to a different project and it really won't go along with this one. Uh, plus me and Aubrey are going on an adventure in a couple days. So we haven't hung out that much this past while. I've been really busy trying to get some stuff done around the house. And uh, definitely having the garage freed up has made a huge difference in getting things done. I would not have been able to do the timing in the back alley. It would have been a struggle trying to do it outside in the yard, in the sun. You know, contaminants being easily exposed to the engine. Yeah. You know, as much as some of you would have liked to see the car finished, just wasn't going to happen. Sometimes you gotta ditch the dead weight. It's like a wife that pisses you off. Why are you with her? For the extra paycheck? Because it ain't worth the hassle. Just kick her out, send her packing, move on to a new life. I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs>